Before we discuss the process of translation in which we synthesize our proteins from RNA molecules, we have to discuss a concept known as the genetic code. Now, as we'll see in just a moment, the genetic code is basically a system that is used by the cells, specifically by the ribosomes, to translate the language used by the RNA molecules to the language that is used by our proteins. And we'll see what that means in just a moment. First, let's discuss several other important points. So, the central dogma of molecular genetics is basically a concept that tells us that the flow of genetic information in any cell goes from the DNA molecule to the RNA molecule to the protein. Now, any given DNA molecule in any given organism consists of genes, and genes are basically specific sequences of nucleotides that code for proteins. Now, even though DNA molecules contain genes, DNA molecules themselves are not directly used in protein synthesis. What happens is, our DNA molecules, the genes in DNA molecules, are transcribed into RNA molecules. So we basically transfer the genetic information from our DNA to our RNA and then those RNA molecules are used by ribosomes to basically form our proteins by using the genetic code as we'll see in just a moment. So it's not the DNA but it's the RNA molecule that is directly involved in the process of translation in the process of protein synthesis. Now, the entire sequence of DNA of any organism, including the genes as well as the non-coding regions of our DNA, is known as the genome. And only a small percentage of the genome actually consists of the coding regions, of the regions of nucleotides that code for proteins. And that's exactly why we have to use these RNA molecules because the DNA molecules consist predominantly of non-coding regions. So one reason why we use the process of transcription is to basically only transcribe the genes into our RNA molecules so that we don't have to worry about the non-coding regions, about the non-coding regions that basically do not code for any protein. Now, let's recall what the process of transcription is. So, as we mentioned earlier, the process of transcription is pretty simple, and that's because both RNA and DNA molecules are polymers of the same exact unit, of the same exact molecule known as the nucleotide. The only difference between the nucleotides of RNA and DNA molecules is that in DNA, the sugar is the deoxyribose, and in RNA, the sugar is the ribose. And in RNA, the thymine are replaced with the uracil nitrogenous bases. So let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose we have the following DNA molecule that we want to use as the template for transcription. And this DNA molecule is commonly known as the antisense strand or the antisense strand. So basically the antisense strand consists of our adenine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine nucleotides. So when transcription takes place, our cell transcribes beginning on the 3N and ending at the 5N so that we transcribe the new RNA beginning at the 5 and ending at the 3 end. And the method by which we actually transcribe is pretty simple because the language that is used by RNA and DNA is exactly the same. That is, both of these molecules use nucleotides. So when transcribing from DNA to RNA, we synthesize RNA by using the nucleotides that are complementary to the nucleotides on the antisense 
DNA strand. So basically, if this is A, then we know this must be U. If this is C, cytos uh, cytosine, this must be guanine. If this is adenine, this must be uracil. And if this is thymine, then this must be adenine, and so forth. So basically when in the nucleus transcription takes place, the cell has no problem transcribing from our DNA to our RNA because all it has to do is find the complementary nucleotide. But during the process of translation, when we synthesize our proteins from RNA molecules, things aren't that simple and that's because our mRNA consists of nucleotides so the language of RNA is the language of nucleotides but proteins use the language of amino acids and as we know nucleotides and amino acids are not the same type of molecule. So the question is, how exactly does the cell know what sequence of nucleotides corresponds to a sequence of amino acids? So, once again, things become a bit more complicated when we synthesize proteins during the process of translation, which we'll discuss in much more detail in the next several lectures. So, in translation, the mRNA molecule, which itself is composed of nucleotides, is used as a template to synthesize our proteins that consist of amino acids. And here lies our problem. Nucleotides are different from amino acids. So we cannot use this complementary method. So how exactly does the cell know what sequence of nucleotides corresponds to what sequence of amino acids? So what the cell actually does is it translates the language of our nucleotides, our mRNA molecule to the language of our proteins, our amino acids, by using a system known as the genetic code. So basically the ribosomes of the cell use our RNA molecule, use our genetic code to translate the sequence of nucleotides in the mRNA molecule to the sequence of amino acids. So the genetic code basically is the link between the sequence of nucleotides and our sequence of amino acids. Now, what exactly does our genetic code actually consist of? Well, basically, the genetic code is a list of codons, and a codon is basically a series of three consecutive nucleotides, where each consecutive, which, uh, where each codon corresponds to a specific type of amino acid. So, in the mRNA molecule, a series of three consecutive nucleotides, known as our codon, corresponds to some specific amino acid. For for example, the sequence of nucleotides, our guanine uracil uracil, corresponds to a specific amino acid known as valine. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose our ribosomes in the cell take the following mRNA and what the ribosomes do is they use our genetic code to basically translate what these codons correspond to. So the codon GUU, the sequence of guanine uracil uracil always corresponds to the amino acid valine, while the sequence CCU always corresponds to our amino acid proline. So we see that our genetic code links our mRNA molecule to our protein, and that's exactly how we synthesize or translate our proteins. Now, the question you might be wondering is, why is our codon exactly three uh, nucleotides? Why isn't the sequence only two nucleotides? Well, to answer this question, we can use simple mathematics. We can use simple combinatorics. So recall that proteins consist of 20 different amino acids. So we have 20 different amino acids that our body as well as other organisms actually use. So that means if the genetic code actually makes sense, then we better have 
20 different unique codons that correspond to 20 different unique amino acids that appear in our body. But if we use simple math, we see that if we only have two different positions, two different nucleotides in our codon, then the maximum number of different types of codons is 16. And that's because we have four different possibilities for nucleotides, and four times four gives us 16. And 16 is not enough to actually correspond to the 20 different amino acids that exist in nature. And that's exactly why we have to add one more nucleotide so that we have three consecutive nucleotides in our codon sequence because four times four times four gives us 64 possibilities and that is enough to basically describe the 20 different amino acids that exist in nature. Now, right away, you should notice that the genetic code contains 64 different codons in that particular genetic code. So, 64 different variations of three letter sequences of nucleotides. And since there are only 20 different amino acids that exist in nature, that implies that many of the three letter codons correspond to the same exact amino amino acid and this phenomenon the fact that two or more different codons can correspond to the same exact amino acid makes our genetic code redundant or degenerate so basically, if we look at the following diagram, it describes what we just mentioned. So if we take our genetic code, we see that the sequence CCU or cytosine, cytosine, your cell, and the sequence cytosine, 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 or CCC, these two different sequences both correspond to the same exact uh, pro, uh, uh, amino acid. They correspond to our amino acid proline. Now, I haven't actually listed all the codons that are found in the genetic code, but if you want to, you can look up our genetic code online or in a textbook. So once again, as we'll see in the next several lectures, during the process of translation, when we synthesize our proteins from mRNA molecules, we have to have a way to translate the language used by the mRNA to the language that is used by the proteins. And what the ribosomes do is they use this system known as the genetic code in which we basically have three letter sequences that are known as codons that correspond to specific amino acids. And the genetic code is said to be redundant or degenerate, which basically means that two or more different codons can correspond to the same exact Pro, uh, the same exact amino acid and this makes sense because we only have 20 amino acids and we have 64 different combinations for our codons.